<sighs> okay, so had to drop down to a 15 minute 10 second game. Nobody's interested in playing an hour or 30 minutes. I've been sat waiting for ages for a seek. Okay, so this mini series is in preparation for the over the ball tournament in three days time. So we're starting the tournament in a simulation sort of thing. It's um, a pretend tournament that we're in. So we're playing this first game. We're taking a buy in the first game. Um, so we'll just play this first game, see what would have actually happened if we had played. And then we'll play four more games on the retrospective days and see how we kind of perform and see whether or not we're, we're ready to get the 50-50 mark or not within the tournament. Not really a fan of this position, I think I've covered this quite a few times. Um, it makes you feel like you're winning, you know, the king comes here because you've disturbed the king, you've got the 20 points, so they can't go on castle. But in retrospect, if the opponent plays it well, you end up kind of losing tempo trying to chase these things that you think you've got a bit of gold in. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to allow them to bring this pawn back into play. I'm going to bring my bishop out here. They're going to bring their bishop here, we attack and then it brings the pawn back into line. I know you shouldn't do that, but I'm going to do that on this occasion because there's no point in chasing a fictitious advantage. And what I'm trying to do is reverse that so that we've got an advantage positionally. Because the king sat there quite nicely and then all they do is then get the rooks and then stuff and then they start owning the file. So. If his bishop's going back, then it's blocking off ownership ownership of that file. We can then just position our pieces quite nicely. The ordinary thing for me would be to castle first before doing the bishop thing, feeling, yes, I'm going to own this file here. But it does have the bishops that are covering that area, so you waste time owning a file you don't really have management of. So this is why I'm trying this way not actually interested in that okay so do they lose a bit of tempo by us pushing this smaller piece attacking the higher piece and then again we could attack it sitting here so I don't want to waste time doing too much of that stuff um, he is defending the pawn I'm gonna push on to it okay and then push again She's gonna to have to push this pawn down to stop that pawn from pushing. So I'm giving them something to think about at least. It's slightly different to them running and owning this file here. It's based on the opponent's reaction because I thought they would have just gone for bringing the pawn back into line here. So simple pawn push down is going to work quite nicely for them, or even just go into this square. So it gives the bishop space to move, but it does give us this um, opportunity to take the pawn here. So he's gone for the big guns, so if we take, his rook is going to take, because he wants to keep the bishop, well, man, the bishop can still take, because it's still on the pawn. 
So we could push on to this pawn here. He doesn't have to take, he can push down and lock down. If he did take, bishop can take. Don't think they will take though, based on what they've just done. So push. Pushes down. Yeah, let's push it. Oh, oh my god, they took straight away. Oh well, we do have a dilemma now. Do we take with the pawn? But then he's gonna have a passer. Just take with the bishop, like we said. Can expect this pawn pushing down now. Which would make that would make sense because obviously they've got three linked pawns now in that area. Oh, he's not doing that. Okay, it's going for a bit of cleverness. Um, I'm not putting much thought into these at the minute because it's looking more and more like the whole process of owning this file has totally gone, in my head anyway. Now this is a whole new position for me. I don't know if it's right though. Maybe they're actually winning. So this pawn's coming here, attack the knight. Oops, attack the knight. Got to castle. Maybe. Yep. Knight's having to babysit this, so we're going to probably lock this down, but can't lock it down. I think he's tempting us to lock it down because then the bishop gets trapped. So we have to be careful on that score. So it's all a bit dishevelled and kind of just based on the fact that we wanted them to bring their pawn into the centre so that it blocked that area down. But then I think we went a little bit crazy because the opponent hadn't done the expected move. We thought, well, let's put some more pressure onto their bishop. Whether that's improved our position or not is a little bit unclear. For me, if I was putting a little psychological wager on it I would go I think I probably messed it up <laughs> um, because this is easily challenged here yeah it's easily challenged there I'm going to attack the knight and I'm going to take it off the board I'm not going to give that much thought because of the aspect of this pawn you see and that's the only reason why I've moved a bit quick there so I'm going to castle now So hopefully maybe I can get my knight freed up a bit. It's coming for the bish. And he's feeling quite good that he's got this here. So we might have to push this pawn up. Yep, yeah, let's push this pawn up. So this diagonal here is feeling fairly comfortable so we might have to move the king but then he's got the other diagonal with his bishop here. So that's a bit menacing so probably looking to get the knight out. Can we attack anything? Okay so that looked like a slow move but can we make something of this? If we go here then attack the bishop. Go here we can still attack the bishop with the pawn. Yeah okay let's go here attack the bishop with the pawn. Okay, let's attack the bish. He may still take the pawn because he's on our bishop. Oh my. Oh, my bishop can't take the pawn. Okay, so I'm going to have to move to the side here. Then his pawn or rook takes there. So they're plus one out of all that. Uh, 